Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> so Asian. <laughs> That's become my thing, right? It's like, ever since I moved to Thailand, it's just been this. I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It started when I moved here. And I don't know why it started. I just think because maybe it was an Asian thing. Like, you know, seeing like. It's a clash. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, for example, if you have like a young girl, like Asian girl doing it, then yep. you're like, classic. Yeah. But then if you have like <laughs> old fighter. The old fighter. <laughs> Again, I'm calling an old man. I'm always an old you man. You made yourself the old man. You literally <laughs> made yourself. But I'm just, because you've said it so much, now I'm just like, well, he obviously calls himself. <laughs> so what got you into fighting? Like, how did you, how did you come to find out that you enjoyed fighting? Um, it was why I got into martial arts yeah. was for mental health because I was struggling. I think I was like, I was turning 20 and I was struggling a lot with emotional management. And um, in the States, generally what happens when you're unhappy is they put you on medicine yep. and then they say, oh, you're, di you're diagnosed as depressed and you know, go talk to a therapist. And, uh, but, and that, and um, yet I was taking the meds. I was still, and oh, lo and behold, I'm still unhappy. And yeah. what <laughs> martial medicine arts. Medicine doesn't work. Workout works. Well, yeah, well, because the States is like overly pill obsessed. Right? Yeah. It's yep. like any small thing, your anxiety, take a pill for that. Yep. Depressed, take a pill for that. Whereas in reality, what I needed was healthy food, a community, exercise, and that's what martial arts all provided. Yeah. It was a way to move my body. It was a way to get stronger, gain confidence, feel like I'm getting better at something. Like when you're training, exercising, you want to eat healthier. And so I think um, growing up, I was never a violent person. I was never very aggressive and I was more on the timid side. And so when I started to learn, but I loved like, um, I loved like Pokemon, you know, like, things, you know, like animes where characters fought and yeah. then got better yep. and then but then like what I love about the Japanese animes is oftentimes you would show people like falling in their face and then but then getting back up and yes. then like training and then like you know trying to overcome the obstacle and my favorite video game as a kid was a Nintendo and then oftentimes you would fight like a big boss with your Pokemon yep. and then you would lose but then you were like okay okay train and then like okay now I'm gonna try to fight them again. And Did then, you like, play on the Game Boy, the old Game Boy? No Nintendo. Just That's Nintendo. A, Nintendo's okay. my generation. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we had we had the Game Boy cartridges that we could plug into the Nintendo and we'd steal. <laughs> but, but yeah, but so like that concept of getting better at uh -huh. something. And, um, and then being okay to like fail and be like, okay, no, it's not about, like failure isn't, um, it isn't final. Like get back, brush, your, brush yourself off and then keep on going at it. So that's why I, when I wanted to fight is because I wanted to test myself. I wanted to, yeah, it, it was a challenge. Yeah. That, also with regards to, because I, I'm afraid of crowds, I'm, you know, I'm afraid of stepping, putting myself out there. It's yeah. really outside of my comfort zone. So, Fighting. Yeah, yeah. It's, did, <laughs> it, <laughs> nice, I'll get shot. <laughs> yeah, so it, I think it was because I really enjoy doing things that, um, how to say it? That are is uncommon. That is not expected. Yeah. Which was why, like, I got into programming and why I got into fighting was because people say that. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's people think that you can't, and it's fun to be like, oh, actually, I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And to because as you conquer, um, as you overcome certain things, it's just like, oh, if I can do this, what else can I do? What else am I capable of? Yep. And it's very, it feels really good to overcome your own inner obstacles as well. It's not so much about, when I was younger, it was about proving something to other people. Yeah. But these days, it's a lot more about actually showing myself that I'm capable. Yeah, that's the biggest win. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 
true martial artist. A true martial artist, yes. Really? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, because, like, myself, I, I'm very similar to you. I was always afraid of fighting. Really? So I fought, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was bullied as a kid. I got beat up a lot. And so I said, I'm going to find a way to stop getting bullied and beat up. And so I fought. Okay. When did you start fighting? I started when I was 19, but martial arts have been a part of my life for most of my life. Like Taekwondo when I was 6 um, to like 10. But then wrestling is when I really got into it, and I was around 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. Before uh, martial arts, what was your passion? Like what did you like to do mm. before martial arts? What's very interesting is that before martial so I got into martial arts when I was around 20, 19, 20. Prior to that, I actually hadn't explored my passions that much because I was so focused. I was a teenager in high school and my only focus was to get into university to escape high school. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't actually, so during the four years coming up to university, all I wanted was, because I had an angsty teenage moment where I was just like, I need to get out of here, I hate it. I hate my life. <laughs> yep. And so nobody has ever experienced that before, ever. By the way, you're very unique. <laughs> <laughs> and so my pure, my only focus yeah. was to like get into university and okay. get out. And actually, I wanted to. Originally, I wanted to be a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And but then, uh, then I, after a while, I was like, oh no, there's too many variables. Like I, I have to can't control the actors. I can't mm -hmm. control the sound designers but you're still kind of a filmmaker isn't that interesting how things like turn around yeah because it's like it all like comes around in the circle because i wanted to tell stories when i was prior to when i was in middle school i wanted to be a writer okay. a storyteller it's raw yeah, it's i know raw. right yeah. <laughs> um so it, it's so funny how it all goes full circle because I always enjoyed stories like ever since growing up my mom would tell me all kinds of stories and that was my favorite memories with my mom would either make up stories or tell me my favorite stories yeah and then as I got older I was like I wrote stories and I drew a lot and I wanted to be a writer then as I then as I went to high school I was like I want to be a filmmaker and then Afterwards, I was like, okay, I can't control the variables. I want to become a game designer because as a game developer, I can create my own little world and I can control everything, like every aspect God. of it. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is my universe. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, yeah. So that was actually what I was passionate about nice. coming up. And I didn't know anything about martial arts coming so up. So how did you get into martial arts then? It was... I went to university, I got super depressed, uh -huh. and I was struggling a lot, that's when I told you, like, um, yeah, I got put on meds, like, I was, I had a lot of teen angst, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought that going to university, I was escaping all of that, but all of the negative thought patterns were still there. That they exacerbate it, themselves, right? Yeah, it was like, yeah. just because you change an environment, it doesn't mean like your old thought patterns are completely gone. Of course, like change, the change of environment at first shifted me out of it. So for the first like month, I was like, I'm a new person. Wow, like all the past trauma, self-created like mental trauma is gone. But then like the old like thoughts, you know, of like not feeling good enough and came back that combined with like the university environment which was like it was a lot of lack of sleep like you know it promoted mm -hmm. pulling all-nighters like that's what students did all the times so we had a 24-hour cafeteria with like unhealthy food so like this culture of pulling all-nighters and of you know unlimited food yeah. that, so you could it's like, basically like have some spaghetti and some chocolate cake and it's like carbs on carbs and yeah, sugar yeah and then no one like you know I hadn't learned any tools for emotional management at that time so yeah. I was feeling stressed and unhappy I was self medicating with food and then like my I was getting fat <laughs> and then not feeling good about myself so the freshman 15 hit yeah. you oh fu yeah that really <laughs> did. 
I like I like the self censor. Oh, but, yep, 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 yep. Keeping it above board, keeping it under eighteen friendly. Very nice. <laughs> oh, it was. I mean, it was. It was, and it was just like at that time, it, like I didn't have all the tools that I have now. Like now, if I'm feeling anxious, I go for a run. You yep. know, like you know, I examine my thoughts. I instead of I question them instead of like just just blindly like following going down a mental a negative mental loop i'm more aware but all those tools i didn't have back then yeah and and so when i did discover martial arts it was kind of like a glimpse at like because also like all the adults were saying they're like take your meds take your meds go to the therapist and i was like it's not working it's not working and they're like no you just have to do it and trust the process and i was just like it's not working i don't like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah and then but then when i started training martial arts then that was when it was a glimpse and i was just like i feel happier this is the first time i've felt happy in ages and like there's something here like i feel it and that's why i kept on pursuing it was because i was like i was like for the first time i feel happy <laughs> like, yeah like training and you know like yeah, sweating and you know, starting to eat healthy, getting fit again. So. Exploring a new language, exploring a new culture. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah. you've you've gone through your journey, and your journey brought you here to Thailand, where I just saw this girl beat up another girl like last weekend with your shins, and they're not that bad. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you just touch it like lightly. <laughs> There's still baby shins. Okay. Well, so you fought, so you just fought an Ultra Instinct 5. Yes. And you did an excellent job. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was a really nice and, and impressive fight. I enjoyed watching it, so good job. Thank you. Yeah. I did not get to see Ultra Instinct 4. Unfortunately, I was out of town for that. But you're fighting more now, right? Mm-hmm. And are, do you plan to continue that? Are you going to try and keep building on that? Maybe, like, how many fights do you want this year? Um, so why, I yes, I do want to continue fighting because from what I have observed, the best fighters, Muay Thai fighters, mm-hmm. are the ones who have fought the most in the least amount of time. Mm-hmm. Like, the the ones that the I admire the most, they they fight every month, and then that's that's how they've improved the fast, the the quickest. So there's a part of my brain that's like, no, I don't want to. It hurts. That don't want to fight. But then there's that's the pussy part of yeah. my brain that doesn't want to. But there's then the part of me that wants to improve at yeah. Muay Thai is like this is the way forward. Is to continue fighting, continue because that's when you're going to learn the most. No amount of training is going to to equate to actually fighting. Yeah. I have to do something about these shins, though. That was... They really hurt. It just takes time. It's time and pain. It's okay. You'll figure it out. We all do. Like, I'm going to get KO'd from hurt shins because that's what hurt the most. Nothing hurt except my shins. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wait wait until you don't have the elbow pads on anymore and you oh, start no. throwing kicks and you catch like the crook of your foot just right on that I point of the that elbow. In training. Oh, it hurts so bad. Yeah. Even through shin pads, like whack. You're like, I guess that yeah. keeps on happening to me through training. That I don't think ever gets better. Yeah, and then you naturally, like you instinctively use your elbows and your knees to check. Because when we were training, you're just like, and I was like, oh, fuck. It's like he he just instinctively uses the sharpest parts of his body to check. I'm old. <laughs> old man like, shit. It's good. Yeah, I was like, ow, ow, ow. Good, good reaction. Good I instinct. don't mean to. I know, but it's it's like you've trained it into muscle memory. What? So, like, if I'm going to... I normally don't block kicks. Normally, I catch kicks mm. because I'm going to take people down because mm. I, I don't fight Muay Thai, yeah. right? I'm a mixed martial artist so like, and a wrestler, so I just want to grab legs all day. Like, yeah. That's mine. Yeah. So, normally, um, I want to do that, but yeah. then today, I'm like, ah, I can't do that. So, then instantly, it becomes... Bing. Yeah. <laughs> Back yeah. to the elbow. But it's, it's like, what is most effective? It was actually, you know, like, when I fought... Uh, wait, the, what you last saw, like they put on 12 ounce gloves. Yeah. And 
I thought it was going to be like 10 ounce. And I remember like them putting the big 12 ounce gloves and I was like looking at this. I was like, either I can try to like hit her with these pillows mm -hmm. or I can <laughs> use Dirt like, <laughs> you know, like the part of me that's not covered and that's bony. Yep. So yeah, it's like what, what is most efficient yep. <laughs> in this situation? <laughs> see, see, you can't say, ah, oh, ah. Oh you are a martial artist you're trying to figure out how to hurt people the most easy like the easiest way to hurt people she's figuring it out that's that's what we do it's being efficient it's being efficient i don't mean to hurt you i'm just being efficient with my time yeah we're just like how can we end this as fast as possible so so you're doing your fight career and you're awesome on social media i see you every day on instagram posting and posting and posting and doing all these by the way the little arrow things that you do on your videos where like you'll show like how you step and there's like a cool little arrow how do you do that and what program do you use because i kind of want to know because i don't know <laughs> it's called in shot you use in shot yes so you have premium in shot is it not a... even really you don't need premium for that effect i need to bother you to like Give me a tutorial. I will show you. <laughs> I will show you. It's super simple. Yay! It's like it's like it will take like two minutes <laughs> to show you. <laughs> your your Instagram posts and videos and stuff like that. You're super popular. You're. I think when I met you, you had like twenty thousand followers. Now you're up to thirty. So, Forty now. Forty now. Oh, oh. Yeah. I need to stalk you more efficiently. Forty thousand followers. Yes. So. You've, you, earlier you said that you wanted to be a, a movie maker, right? Mm -hmm. You wanted to create video, mm -hmm. but you couldn't control aspects. Mm -hmm. However, now you create video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you control all the aspects, right? Yeah. Because it's not really acting. It's just simply giving tutorials. You, you know the exact, you know what you want to do. You know what you want to get across. And so you have a method of doing that. Mm -hmm. And you're very effective at it mm -hmm. because, well, you've got 40,000 followers, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what's kind of interesting, though? What's that? Recently, I've started working with some gyms. Yeah. And, like, I, I've been working with the bots. I've blown their socials up to, like, 30-plus thousand. Like, there, I feel like there's a missing... Uh, space in the marketplace for gyms creating tutorial content because people when they see like tutorial content coming from gyms they're way more likely to follow whereas for me it's like my message is a little bit like confusing because i'm like oh i create tutorials but i'm not an instructor and i'm not really a professional fighter and so like it's a little bit more like people are confused what they're getting whereas with a boxing gym you're like hey I'm creating boxing tutorials, we're a boxing gym, you know, yep. we have that established brand credibility. And what I've noticed creating, and what I've noticed not just with um, uh, the box, but with other gyms that have created good tutorial content is that their following goes up way faster than mine because okay. they have such a clear message as to like what, you know, they, they've already established themselves as an authority being a boxing gym and it makes sense for them to come out with boxing tutorials they just blow up like now the box is already at like they're gonna surpass me I already know and the other gyms that I've worked with that I've done socials for like they just blow up in followers and like surpass me all the time because it's a clear like you know they already had that authority well you know you've found you've you've created yourself a niche to like you said you you've got a lot of um, beginning martial artists who follow you um, and I and you've done a good job of marketing yourself to them and gain, capturing their attention. So then by impart, imparting yourself into gyms and creating tutorials with gyms, you do a great service to the industry, which is phenomenal. It, it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. 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 And that's rewarding. Yeah. So, and you feel like the, big, the biggest pain point is the difficulty for gyms to do that themselves? 
Well, like we discussed off camera, creating content takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. Um, and also, if it's not, like for me, it's my comfort zone. Like, I am really proficient at creating content. So it's, I don't, it, it's easy for me. But I, I realize that with other people, because it's not their comfort zone, uh, it, it's harder for them to create content. Gotcha. Yeah, and even me, like, I can, like, turn out content every single day, but it takes me at least, like, an hour to edit and publish. Yeah. And a lot of the gym owners, they don't have, they don't even have an hour yeah. to, you know, and not to mention you have to film it, too, and that takes, like, 30 minutes, too. Yeah, because you got to set it up, the film, and then you got to make sure the angle's right, then you got to get it done, then you got to go and re rewatch all of it, then cut it then in part clips and then draw little arrows on the screen and then do all this shit that you just don't want to do but then you got to do, do it i want to do it i want to do it and it still takes me a long time yeah but see, yeah so you want to do it because you found the way and you, that's part of your passion i enjoy it because for me i learned that because what i like to do is like i the coach teaches a technique and i'm like ooh, that was cool like i'm gonna forget this because i have goldfish memory so let's <laughs> film this and then i can edit it and then i understand it better and then i publish it so like i already have personal incentive to do it and even then it, it takes time to that's cool that's super cool so you've you what language do you program in javascript java you already mentioned that Okay, so JavaScript. JavaScript. Yeah, Java. different than Java. What? Java and JavaScript are different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I don't, yeah. And then React is built on top of JavaScript. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. I understand a little bit about React because I've heard that word before. Because your app is built in React, the app that yeah, you're the, promoting. So Combat Matrix is built, the front end of it is React, right? So you you actually, so with the front end, front end development, we're using React. And you actually understand what that looks like from a developer standpoint. I do. I'm like a junior developer. So I just like my fighting level mm. like i'm not pro so i do to a certain extent okay yeah but that but see that that's cool because like for instance what we were talking about right off camera is because of combat matrix what we're doing is we're we're niching down into our culture our mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and that drives some interest from somebody like you thank you by the way <laughs> yeah, I was like, only after you beat me up in the gym will I listen to you. <laughs> but see, that's part of the talking. That's how we communicate. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I respect you now. <laughs> now I respect you. <laughs> see, by, when people say violence doesn't solve anything, it kind of solves a little bit. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, to be able to, br to find people in our community who also share that, ability oh, that is like a fantasy for me and that was originally my brand when i started out i was fight code julia fight code julia. i was a coder and fighter but then i stopped you became the nomad i became nomad because i just wasn't coding anymore because i it was yeah it, it's it, it because i'm the type of person is like if i have other people doing it then mm. i enjoy it but if i'm just doing it anything if I had to train Muay Thai by myself, I'd be like, fuck that, I'm not really interested anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, for me, it's about doing, sharing a passion with other people. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, the fact that you're interested in coming on and helping with the development of this, yeah. it's so cool because it gives us a chance to work together and it gives you a chance to really put your name on this as well, which I think is phenomenal. Julie, I'm super happy to have trained with you today. Same, yeah. Beat up my arm. It's going to be sore tomorrow, but that's okay. I yeah, might, I might you've have earned a bruise. my respect. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you're like, punch harder. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Julie, I think we can work together. Same. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>